Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. And welcome to the weekly gardening vlog. Today, I'm going to show you around the garden a little bit. Last week was more of a harvesting video and uh, just, um, I guess not really harvesting so much as starting the fall garden. So I'm gonna show you those seeds out down in the greenhouse. We'll be able to see what they're doing. And then, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of a walk around. All the herbs on the deck, I suck at watering. So they're not dead, but they're not doing great. And <laughs> you know, like you got the mint, like it's it's good, but you know, it's not good. <laughs> uh, so I need to do, uh, get a lot better at watering. And then um, the, I also have some seeds underneath the grow light in here. Again, same problem. I forgot to water them, a lot of them died. Some of them are doing fine. Uh, mostly I have some Napa cabbage growing and some uh, Brussels sprouts. I don't know, I don't think they're gonna do well because I think it's a little bit too late in the season. But, you know, it's been a good experiment. <laughs> all right, and then over here, this here is all volunteer tamatillos. All of these tamatillos just, they appeared. So we're just waiting for these. They got the cool little lanterns going on. So I really like tamatillos. They're really, really great for attracting pollinators. And then we also have all of these poppies that are getting filled up. This is my first time growing poppies. So I'm not sure what happens after the stage if I harvest them right away, but I need to look into them. And they're still producing. There's two different kinds of, of, of poppies that have started to grow. There's this one that is really dense and bushy and beautiful. And then there's this one that's a little more wispy, but uh, they both produce uh, poppy pods. This one is just significantly smaller. I don't know if it's gonna grow, but I'm learning. And you can see we got a really big tamatillo harvest or uh, tamatillo. All of these are vol tamatillos are volunteer. So anything we get is just a super duper bonus. Last week I harvested a bunch of these uh, cabbages. There's a few left that are I left here to grow. Some of them, like I left the outside leaves here, and you can see on a couple of them, they're starting to grow the little like tennis ball size cabbages that are supposed to grow when you leave them. So it's working. It's only been like 10 days, I think. So it's doing a pretty good job. And then, but over here is our fennel. This guy went to seed. And oh my gosh, there's three of them here. <laughs> three of them, right? Oh, four, sorry, four. Uh, the fourth one is just kind of leaning that way. But you can see just how big these things are. Growing some crazy fennel flowers. These are gonna turn into, um, I can definitely tell, I think fennel must be related to dill. These have very similar flowers. But I mean, these are definitely fennel, they're not dill. <laughs> and then we have our lettuce that also went to seed. I'm going to save these seeds. These are romaine. I'm not sure how to do it, but obviously they're starting to form pods, maybe? I don't know. I'll look in, have to look into it. I think this is probably forever going to be some kind of a, a lettuce bed, <laughs> but that's not a problem. And we have this wild and crazy volunteer tomato. I'm not sure what this thing is, but we're just kind of letting it, letting it do its thing and we'll see what happens. And then you can see here we have a tomato behind it. There's just like, it's a bit, one big tomato cage. And then beans growing up it. These are Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans. These things are delicious. These are my favorite ones so far. They have, a, they're, they're very tender. They have a really nice flavor. They grow quickly and they don't have a string. They're just really good. I like them a lot. And then this whole bed right here is just a bunch of like winter crops that have really just succumbed to aphids. And that's, you know, pretty much entirely my fault. I have not been out here to tend to them. They're starting to get like diseases and stuff. So this whole bed likely in the next week or two is going to be pulled out. Like I don't see saving much of anything. Maybe these scarlet kale, but they're just not growing that great anyway. So I don't see a whole lot of point in getting them. I need to amend this bed big time. And then over here, we have a couple of more tomatoes. Oh, I think I need to harvest those ones. Uh, we have a couple more tomatoes that I planted in here, and they're just wild and crazy ones. Then these are kale, and kale and collards is mostly what's in this bed. This is called a marrow stem kale, I believe. 
and I will forever grow this. I really like it because it's a flat leaf kale, so it has a little bit less um, oxalates in it. As you can see, it just grows huge. I mean, it's like gotta be at least three feet tall. And my husband harvests it. You can see he's harvesting the leaves and stuff. And they're just delicious. I really like them. They're pretty res disease resistant as well. And you can see here, this one's not quite so pest resistant. This one is a uh, red Russian. They're just not holding up to the aphids very well. And that's, you know, mostly my fault. I just haven't kept up with it. Tomorrow and the next few days, we're supposed to be getting a pretty good amount of rain. So just a little bit ago, my husband and I came out here and we got two baskets of tomatoes. Not like huge baskets, but I'd say total maybe like three gallons worth of tomatoes. And we brought those in the house. We also got some cucumbers, uh, my first zucchino Ron picante. And I'm gonna go ahead and if I haven't already, I will put the pictures of those in here so you can see what we actually harvested. I'm pretty stoked about it. But uh, we just got those so that they will not, hopefully they will not crack when we get all the rain. Because we have some epic amounts of tomatoes growing. This whole row here, both sides is our sauce tomato section. And we have some uh, beans at the bottom here. But these are some bush beans and they're fizzled out. And I'm gonna be plucking these here come this coming up weekend and replacing them with some beans that we started last week. But it is definitely going crazy. Tomato town up in here. They are just everywhere prolific and amazing these are some melons not doing super great but these ones are just starting to take off i think these are sakatos melons and then these are supposed to be kiku chrysanthemums just not doing a whole lot but i mean the tomatoes are what it is what is going on in this garden right now um, you can see like all these bush beans like they're pretty much just fizzled out anything that's left on them is just weird and like really fibrous so i got my i got a good harvest off of these in the beginning i thought that i would not want to actually do this ever again but i think i do i just need to get i need to get the planting timing down a little better next time so that the tomatoes can be a little bigger before the beans start to kind of take over the base here. And so that way the leaves will be trimmed up enough that it won't be an issue and it won't get, hopefully won't get in the way of these, uh, these beans won't get in the way of the growth of the tomatoes. That's kind of my plan. I think probably next time I will plant the beans, I'd say a month later than I did this time. I'm gonna have to look back and see when that was, but a week, or um, pardon me, a month later, I think would be just right. And then you can see this beautiful, beautiful trellis here is also um it's i think it's starting to fizzle out a little bit uh there's still some pretty good ones growing on there but it's definitely not quite the level that it was before i've done a tremendous amount of harvesting off of this trellis and then as well as well as all the bush beans here i have gotten I want to say two gallons of fermented beans and I've had a canner load of pints pickled beans. I think that was like maybe nine, I want to say nine jars of pickled, uh, like actual canned pickled uh, green beans. And then I did 17 pints of canned green beans, just regular. And then I did seven pints, seven quarts, pardon me, seven quarts of green beans. And so got a lot harvested so far. I'm pretty pleased with it, especially for somebody who's never done it before. You can see there's just to me, this is also a tamatillo. It's just growing out of the ground right there. <laughs> got a couple of those around here. Got to be careful with the tamatillos if you don't want them to spread. They are, they love to volunteer. And you can see here, we have all this whole thing for the most part, with a few exceptions, is Brussels sprouts here. And there's a couple exceptions that I don't think there's a couple exceptions I don't think are going to do super well. And um, over there, there's a purple cauliflower. We've got some aphids going crazy here. Um, actually, I don't even know if those are aphids. I think those are like white flies or something. But anyways, they move pretty quickly. <laughs> so I just haven't had the time to deal with them. I figure my strength is in numbers in this garden. Like if I grow enough, I'll still get a pretty good harvest because I have the space for a pretty good amount. I just don't necessarily have the time in this moment to tend to them 
go really well. That's my logic anyway. So then this row here is pretty much just tomatoes, both sides. We got sauce tomatoes. We got sauce tomatoes on this side and we have this here is slicer tomatoes. And then that is, you have that center there. And then that bed there is uh, cherry tomatoes. And then we have some melons growing on either side. This is Kajari and this is uh, tiger or tigger melons. And they're just, they're not doing very well. I think the problem with growing these ones here is uh, that the tomatoes were just so huge by the time I planted them in the ground that they just didn't have a chance to take off. They don't have enough sun. They have only a couple hours a window of sun every day so they're just not doing super great so next year lesson learned i need to make sure that i plant these melons in the ground uh probably before i plant the tomatoes in the ground and that should give them a good enough chance and enough sunlight to be able to really take off we'll see and again we harvested a ton of these cherries uh this afternoon these are the zucchino rampicantes i think there's just not as much blockage of the sun so these are kind of able to take off a little bit and this one's even starting to get some flowers on it these are, they're all male flowers but flowers nonetheless they're starting to do its thing so i mean look at this tomato growth i'm just so blown away by it <laughs> this is not this is so much more incredible than last year like wow and then the potatoes, you can see, they're just starting to kind of die back. I think we need to harvest these guys pretty quick. All right, and more cherry tomatoes. Oop, this one's starting to, starting. Really cool. I'm excited. So this one is actually one that uh, it's a branch that fell off another one because it got too big. So I just literally stuck it in the ground and just made sure I kept it wet for a couple of days or afterwards. And it's, it's recovered. It's obviously set root. It's not dead. This was like a month ago and they're starting to produce fruit. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Oh gosh. And this is my Arminian yard long. <laughs> I just, I literally just went this morning or this just like an hour ago and I was looking for fruit and I missed this somehow. So we got one of these. There's another one here, up here. I didn't see any of these when I was out here like an hour ago. <laughs> Goodness sake, I'm blind. There's another one right in here. Oh gosh, there's a lot. Wow, there's even one hiding in there. I don't know if you can see it, but we got a lot of Arminian yard lungs. How did I miss all of these? Oh gosh, here's one. Cucumber Central up in here. Oh, I think I just stepped on a snake. There's a lot of them in here. Golly. <laughs> I can see why they call it a yard long. That thing's huge. All right. So clearly some pickles are in my forecast here in my future very, very soon. And just more slicer tomatoes. Pretty stoked about that one. Um, I did last weekend, I made a recipe. It was like a onion, tomato, cucumber, like a vinegar salad kind of thing. And my husband really liked it. I really liked it. So that's what's on the menu probably for tonight. I told him I'd make some so he can take it for dinner. We got these, Buena Malata. Some of these are super spicy and hot. Some of these are just nothing. Not so much. I want to get some cayennes growing. Got lots of green ones, but none have changed yet. This one's starting to kind of, oh, this one's starting to go. No, this one's starting to die. <clears throat> Oh, there we go. We got one. This is our first red cayenne. Woo. All right, guys, as promised, my first red cayenne. I'm gonna eat this on camera, see how hot it is. All right.
No. Maybe it's just my tolerance. There's no way all these peppers can't be hot. I mean, if I feel a little bit of heat, but nothing really. Oh well. All right, so then we have all of these, both sides here are um, paste tomatoes. And these ones, I mean, holy smoke, they're at least three feet past the trellis. And I kind of gave up on trying to tame them. Um, but yeah, they're doing great. Whoop, missed one. Mmm. I missed this one too. Oh, boss man rot. Darn it. Oh well. I'll come back for that. And then you can see over here we have oh, starting to get our first powder and mildew. Haven't had any yet. Um these ones, this is kind of our squash land. I've been trying to keep up on it, but it's not been going super great. Pepper's starting to get a little bit of heat. Nothing crazy, but it's definitely starting to feel it in the back of my throat. So, this is squash land. You can see it's starting to get some powdery mildew. I think I need to come through and spray with something this weekend, but it's just doing great. It's doing its thing. Got a bunch of, like the bigger ones are in the back there. And this up here is kind of smaller ones. Like here, this is the first delicata I've seen. And They have some, um, shucks, butternut squash here. Okay, so this is just kind of, everything's growing. It's hard to get in there, so it's hard to know what's really growing, but, um, it's very active for sure. This plant right here is actually a volunteer. I don't have a clue what it is, but it looks kind of cool. We're going to see what it is. And then you can see here, this is kind of the melon cucumber tunnel. It's really starting to take off. I've harvested, I don't know, maybe like 15 cucumbers and one zucchino rampicante. These are slicers, so I'm letting these ones grow up a bit. But, you know, it's doing pretty good. <clears throat> Got the zucchino rampicantes growing over there. I think um, Whispering Willow Farm, she calls them Tremboncino. Trim, trim I can't remember what she calls them, but I think they're the same thing. And it, they're certainly the same shape. Maybe they're just a different variety. I think I'm going to keep this one a little bit shorter than the usual ones. And we're going to make our last stop in here to check on the seeds that we started last week. I started these seeds last week on a Monday. It is now the following week on a Thursday. You're going to see this tomorrow on Friday. So these have been growing for 10 days. I think 10 days. These actually started to sprout about four days after I planted them. That's when I first noticed. Um, but they're just doing fantastic. These are the kohlrabis. This is uh, kale and just kind of the more wintry kale and collards. We've got peas over here. These are doing fantastic. Turnips. Yeah, turnips and rutabagas. we got these Rainier Romaine ones. These are the territorial seed lettuce ones. These are doing the best. These four, not doing much. <laughs> As you can see, we got our other peas here growing. So these ones we're going to be transplanting hopefully this weekend. I might wait till next weekend, but probably going to be this weekend. In other words, it'll be like three days from now. So actually now that I'm thinking about it, three days might be a little soon, but we'll see. I might do some. And we got the beans doing great. Asparagus. The only ones that aren't really doing great, these are the Chiba green soy. And they're starting to take off, but they're a little delayed. And then purple potted pole beans. All of these ones are not doing very well. <laughs> As you can see, the, the red noodle beans, these are doing great. And the royalty purple potted ones, doing great. And then here are all of the beets. These ones, I think I'm gonna have to figure out how to get transplanted here. Probably I'll do these this weekend. I don't want these to get root bound. And then these peas, also doing great. Beans, pardon me. Beans, all of these beans are just doing great. Uh, the agate soybeans. So the soybeans, I think, and because the Hokkaido black ones are also slightly behind the rest of these. 
So I think it must just be a soy thing. I'm new to this, so I think the soybeans maybe just take a little longer to germinate. And then these are also beets, but these ones are just a little bit further behind. But doing great anyways. So I think that's just about it for the garden. I have, the only thing I have that I didn't really show you was some tomatoes up there, but they're just, they're doing their thing. They're the same as all the other ones there. There's no point in showing you every tomato plant that I have. And then, ooh, you can see a big old pumpkin right there. There's another huge green one right in there. Uh, but the only thing left is just this, this fence down here and there's nothing new to show you. It's just, it's pretty flowers. How about I show you the pretty flowers? <laughs> but it's nothing really spectacular. It's just pretty flowers and some beans and tomatoes, nothing super fancy. So um, I just really wanna kinda of keep this one a little bit short for you guys so you can get an update. It is August 19th and um, we are just getting ready to really set in on the fall garden and really just kinda of getting ready for the next, uh, the next season of gardening around here. So we also just got our last round of meat birds. I got 40 meat birds and two roosters that we are going to use uh, for, I think it's called a Pendensica uh, breed. I can't, I can't pronounce it. It's a really old school one. Very pretty, uh, very dark brown eggs. So I'm pretty excited about that one. I was planning on getting rid of that breed, uh, not like uh, just like selling them, uh, but since I got the roosters, which I ordered back in like January, I figured maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep them, maybe I won't. I haven't decided yet, um, but we're just gonna have some tractors rolling around here and just working on the garden that's pretty much it for us around here so uh, i hope you enjoyed this video if you do make sure you give it a thumbs up remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already we'll see you next time thanks for watching bye